Okay, there we go. So yeah. To get... Okay, so I could tell about the AI to like Q and A meeting. It went like amazing. Great. So all of yeah, like a majority of questions uh, came from Mike Hani. So great job to him, even though some of the questions turned out to be like outdated a little bit. But again, we started that process a long time ago. So we, we essentially moved a little bit closer to what AI, Allen AI Institute are doing. And Kyle actually, by the end of that conversation, shared a lot of information in terms of what opportunities are there in terms of where they can't even tackle them because they don't have the data, oh, et cetera. So like who is interested in just kind of observing them? This is like the end of that conversation. I think it's like last five minutes or something are definitely like very insightful. So I learned more than our conversation last week when it was against smaller people, right? So like open my eyes a little bit in terms of like landscape of what Corona why should be moving in terms of as a, like, what are we doing here? So great conversation there. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like that conversation was one hour, so covered both daily call, I haven't seen how that went, and some of the technical calls we have throughout the teams. Well, daily call went straight afterwards. I, I went to daily call afterwards. I missed only like last couple of minutes of the AI2 call, which I enjoyed. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, yeah, especially where they were talking about um, they don't have the bandwidth to deal with some of the problems and some of the some mm -hmm. of the things that they need to look at, and it might be some in a it might be a place that we can help possibly. I don't know, especially around um, sourcing sourcing or and or translating Chinese data. Mm -hmm. Interesting the question because they say they basically they're trying to they're trying to scrape and pull as much of it down as soon as they can because China is going to lock it all up by end of May. So they want to pull as much information to be able to use for research as possible. So that was mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, daily call went fine. Um, Myers made some fair points about trying to unify the teams and make them all have um, mm -hmm. come from the same sort of place. And she really mm -hmm. likes what uh, Slav has been saying. Yeah. Uh, and he is obviously a very capable, very intelligent, very um, informed gentleman, but she think well. She sort of made a comment about she come and came back to me, talk to me afterwards about um, someone like that should be having like one. Of, we should be one of the people who will look overseeing all the teams to be able to make sure that like they're best utilizing what the data and the search mm -hmm. engine teams are trying to build. And, and and I was like, yeah, that's all well and good, but uh, he's not. He's not. He's too busy for that to be able to do a role. Mm. Um, and yeah, he's got all the skills and all the prerequisites he just doesn't have the time so it's a case of how we can find either someone who has the same skill sets and time or people who can just like learn quickly even if it's just elements of the things that he knows just so we can sort of disperse that knowledge across other people so yeah well, you know i'm gonna have to obviously he's very very technically gifted and very technically knowledgeable and very experienced and that's is an asset but it's side effect um if we centralize too much of our requirements in one person and for whatever so, reason they, it kind of goes against the whole idea of distributing the skills so actually regarding this do we like especially right now since like Arthur is not here do we think like this daily call because the format before was essentially Arthur is like a general pm or some I, sort right kind I, of I, I host I hosted it this time and I run the whole yeah. thing. So I basically like, took over Arthur's role today. Yeah, but I mean, like, shouldn't we like try maybe explore the idea? Because we were discussing it before, at least with some people one on one. Like, since we want to have this more teams kind of individually, I mean, like, it, we want to achieve two goals now, right? We want this more intercommunication between teams, right? But at the same time, we, like, uh, autonomous units of, of research, if you will. How about like we start maybe experimenting with some format when like some teams leaders or something kind of presenting more in terms of what they do so others could see. So just change a format without like this stand up type of conversation, maybe do more of a, okay, let's say tomorrow is task, like whatever, task VT is presenting like what the struggle, just kind of get more 
uh, it's not equal weights per team. Yeah, sort of zoom in a bit more on us. Yes, and then for yeah. example, so essentially, like let's say again, like for test with you, like Dan, Dan is essentially kind of guys here we're presenting. Like they create, in a sense, we are doing a mock up of that webinar. That's right. Right now, it's kind of on hold. We could actually within this time while we kind of cut, it would be kind of we could maybe almost great idea. It. Exactly. So, but again, like that, like, yeah. right. So. Do, I mean, do, for example, there was a, at least three new people in the call today. I mm -hmm. didn't realize until afterwards because two of them reached out to me. But um, there's been at least three new people in the call, and obviously they kind of got a snippet of what's discussed right now, but they don't have anything <laughs> with what's happened previously other than, you know, like superficially. I sent them some links and some YouTube stuff to watch and read, and I've sent them in the right sort of directions, but um, mm -hmm. it is a sort of information overload but that said to be a real contributor and to be really useful you have to kind of accept that there's going to be a little bit of information overload you don't have to try and learn everything i mean i'm doing the thing that a lot of people are not doing is i'm dropping into different team calls yeah. when i can mm -hmm. i'm listening to different team calls and even if i am just listening and not really talking i am trying to get an idea of what vtr mm -hmm. are actually working on and the different ideas that are there and and, uh, and uh, I keep a missing team, team uh, the transmissions. Mm -hmm. um, I keep a missing them because they just land out of time that don't work for me. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm doing that because I have the ability and the time to sort of mm -hmm. dedicate to that and how to how we can like work out how to concentrate what's being picked up by people who like me who are wandering around mm -hmm. and seeing other people. Yeah, well, um, but... it's a it's hard to balance because. I don't know yet. I definitely want to cross pollinate and make people aware of what's going on, but sometimes getting into the details is where you actually learn what's going on and you can't do, a, you well, can't yeah, do all the then, details. That's the whole point of, like, of this exercise is for kind of jump into details more. Yeah. Because what I know, right, in a sense, uh, like Arthur was aware what teams are doing. Mm -hmm. He was part of like Task Risk. That's why like this kind of five minutes or whatever, like this reports, what are the blockers were kind of making sense essentially kind of get this but now we essentially coming up like okay we need to figure out what's the good model not having one person essentially kind of overseeing this right so for that i think like this uh, kind of experiment with one team taking the lead presenting more <laughs> what they do then obviously we'll leave still the same format of kind of like okay here's our blocker so other teams could still act accordingly but at the same time, we'll create spacing that is like was done by other means, right? Mm. But now it will be yeah. within this daily call. And then yeah, after, the, after, after this call, I wonder. I wonder if um, I'd like the idea of just experimenting with that and seeing what it is. Mm. Would, would would you maybe be able to reach out to the different team leaders and see if there would be a team who would be interested in in maybe doing something? Like yeah, that? yeah, it's actually a good thing. Like when you ask them first. Um, yeah, because I think it is a good idea because to a certain extent, the way we are right now is whoever's leading the call takes the first sort of five minutes, usually to talk about organization stuff or general pictures or vision stuff or mm -hmm. stuff that's like, you know, the big, the bigger thinking or the bigger organization <laughs> stuff. And then comms usually gets a little bit of time, you know, usually about recruitment or uh, what you know what new communication yeah. stuff what sponsorships that sort of stuff and then we do the d different teams but if there's nothing major organizational or communication we can shove mm. one of the one of the main tasks at the front and go you've got you've got 10 minutes you've got 10 you know you've got 10 yeah, to 15 yeah. minutes and then everybody else because there's only three three or four teams left after that they can so, do the three minutes each and well, then be actually, done with it Actually, what right now also happens on technical side, we already have a dedicated team that works primarily on like search engine, yeah. right? Yeah, so but they're not turning right up for now, daily calls right now. Yes, but I mean, this is kind of, again, this is what I don't like, right? We need to kind of this more engagement at level. And before this daily call stand-up routine was essentially helping facilitate, like, uh, you know, help with that. But now we essentially got this process of, okay, daily call, like just, you kind of missing it totally, but then you kind of like, oh, I'm waiting for search team call. Or if you're part of like task VT, task type, task risk, they have, all have daily calls. And I think like, okay, we're kind of losing this edge in terms of daily calls. <coughs> uh, I mean, I don't know we're losing or not. Like, like I haven't seen today's call 
because right now we had this wrong pipeline of uh, the the recording went to the email that we like as a team we don't have access to, but uh, <coughs> just, I think like it's a good opportunity for us to try remix a little bit the daily call so it will be like that place of all of the separate calls to just simply voice something so we don't have this disconnect and that's why like, again yeah. yeah, we need we need more teams to report but we have only 30 minutes that's why that <laughs> format that we have today it's you know it's not scalable that's why i'm yeah. kind of like you know let's try this one team dominating the mm -hmm. kind of time slot essentially like okay whatever like T tyler i think you already outlined this nicely like 15 and minutes basically the first, one the ten, yeah first 10 15 minutes and then the same sort of things then you get a block as a for the other three teams stroke four yeah. depends yeah. on how you define it yeah and um, then if because comms and organizational stuff is so often we're not coming with blockers or problems because we're kind of solving our own problems. We're normally just and we have our own call right now, right? Like right. we could yeah, exactly. discuss and we, that. And we and we and yeah. we deal with his blockers on his own because as much as it's nice to get everyone involved, it's like it's not it's it's, it's systematic boring shit that not everyone wants to give a shit about. <laughs> right. The people who care turn up and everybody else don't care because it's yeah. not really relevant to them. One, one thing that I want to start experimenting with, and we might see if we can do it tomorrow, but for the comms call, is using the Kaltura platform that we now have access to for that. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll mention the three, the three calls that I had today, because they were, they were, my CoronaY access was, <laughs> each piece was pretty massive. So Kaltura has given us their platform. It's amazing. Um, it allows us to um, have, they're going to give us basically 20 different classrooms which each mm -hmm. one Zoom conference. Is it like, is it like um, an educate? Is it like the education? It's, it's made for an educational piece, but it's going to be perfectly suited to us. So to quickly mm -hmm. things that are most useful for us, we'll have up to twenty different classrooms that we have access to. So that means like task VT, all of our different teams will have uh -huh. a panel that they can log up and log into there any time that they want. There's no worry about about calls smashing into one another. And it's, okay. uh, that's a little bit like what we're talking about discords having their own rooms. It's kind of right. Well, well, video I, I, equivalent of yeah, let me, let me, I'll, I'll describe what the, I'll describe what the features are. So, so that's one of the features we can do breakout rooms. So in, for example, the daily call, it would be easy enough for us. Some of the, I think are especially good when we have, you know, hundreds of people who aren't necessarily engaged. It makes it easy for us to have calls where we split people out and all of a sudden everyone is in randomized groups of five people and they can talk about like mm -hmm. what, what do you think we should be doing differently at CornerWire, whatever the thing might be. It gives us the ability to, sh to trade five, instead of just links, we can use it like a Dropbox and we can be trading files back and forth. Mm -hmm. Doing things like putting a PDF up on the screen or an image on the screen and then have multiple people pointing at it or drawing on it or doing different things like that with it. Yeah, I've seen the whiteboard thing sounds cool because I was coming, yep. I came across a, a, a online whiteboard thing and I'm like, that would be really useful for when people yeah. want to like this has, ideas together. This has all of that. So we're going to get 19 classrooms that have a capacity of 50 people per classroom. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get Jeez, a, a lot. One, we'll get a, a 20th one that has enough for 250 people. And so that's the one for when we're doing major webinars or anything like that, we can, we can host them through that. Um, so it's, it's a huge thing that they're offering and it looks like it's pretty that's, cool. Yeah, that Liam sounds is, like a f full, full features. Yeah, Liam is gonna do a little bit of a, of a sort of a forensic review of it just to make sure that from a security standpoint that there's nothing glaring mm. that you be aware of with it. Um, but, but it seems like it's gonna be a good tool. So my suggestion is that we here in communications first experiment with it uh, work out some of the bugs and figure out how to do it so mm -hmm. that we can have meetings with it and kind of help the other teams. And then we can, we can train other people with it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that was, that was one of their key things. I mean, their, their main criteria are just, you know, we put up their sponsor thing on the website, which we do with anyone anyways, at the mm -hmm. end, the calls for like the daily calls we put on YouTube at the very end, we put up a little, a little thing of their logo sort of it's indicating that they've sponsored that. Um, and that we try to do as much of the training in-house as possible. So one or two of us, they'll help us learn how to do it, but then we have to help the rest of everyone understand it. But that's, that's a reasonable ask for- mm -hmm. That's a reasonable ask, because they're not, because we're not paying for them. <laughs> so. Exactly. Oh, um, yeah. So, I'm so pretty that's techie, all... I can train techie stuff. I'm not bothered about picking yeah. it up, it only adds my skill set. Yeah, uh, plus it comes with training, which is great. So the next mm -hmm. the call that I had today was with the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute. And that oh, one- go. It was amazing. So there's three major initiatives that they're involved with. One is the Roche Data Science Coalition, um, which mm -hmm. is a group of people um, 
you know, NVIDIA Health Storyline, Spectre Institute, all of these different people who are working on translational solutions related to COVID-19. Um, the one that I'm maybe most excited about um, in the short term is the CodeVid Hackathon. So this is a month-long marathon hackathon in Edmonton that's been going on. So, the, so uh -huh. they're trying to compete with us on time. No, no, no. Not yeah. a, it, 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 this, it's beautiful what they're doing. They've got 1,600 people in 40 different countries who have been working uh -huh. uh, for, for the last month on pieces. Mm -hmm. Collaborate with them marvelously. We can probably have a slight bridge channel. And at the end of April, they're closing down. Which means that there's going to mm. oh there's going to be a those big circles there's... of people with interests who exactly. want to throw it out. <laughs> yeah, um, so so it's a good chance for yeah. us to start figuring out what it is that they're focusing on, and then mm -hmm. yeah, how much of that influx we might want to sort of channel in, and whether how much of that then goes directly to trying to support round two Kaggle, and then if there's just a whole bunch more. I mean that's you know more than double, and those are sixteen hundred active people. So so that's something. That's... That's a noise floor that we're not quite used to yet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an exponential growth from where we're at right now. And so I think that mm. if, if we can spend a bit of the next half month figuring out how do we get Building. ready. How to get yeah. ready. Building for the um, wave. Um, I was doing a little bit of my own nosing around today. Um, I sit on a similar sort of thing. Uh, the UK has got um, an organization called the o Open Data Institute. Really quite, yep. uh, founded by Tim Berners-Lee big on open data, open data systems. And Leeds has got one of it, Leeds and London are like two of the major hubs. Leeds has got a pretty big active community and they've actually started throwing together like on an unofficial hackathon, but it's not really going to a stage that it's actually solving problems. It's just building a little bit. And I was gonna maybe see about, cause they've, they've got a little workspace and they've got some sponsorship, but there's a lot of like local academics, but also like council representatives, um, NHS Digital's in there. There's like a lot of stakeholders, especially stakeholders with access to proprietary and closed and limited data sets, especially yeah. with the municipality talk we were okay, about. Okay. I, I was like, I was thinking if we could, I could work out a way of, like not just coming to them going, well, we're trying to compete with you or anything like that or steal any people. It's just a case of you're running a smaller system. Can we make your small system connect into our growing bigger system with international links? Yeah. So, and it would be a way to bring the, like the leads and the ODI on. And then if they can get the ODI on, they have probably got a whole note, sets of notes because they are like yeah. mostly sponsored and supported by local councils, local governance. governance. That's amazing. And that, that brings stats and information and they bring like stats and information in. And some of the people are building their own data sets, just scraping like yeah. websites and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's clunky and slow and weird, but can we, can, cause some of them are probably doing it manually. And I'm like, we could probably, if we can yeah, we bring can help you them. in with the, mach yep. the machine learning people, we'll just automate them things so we can do that better. So we can all get, yep. and then that helps the geo team build a more refined palette of like, right. it, it, it means they can do sort of Brit, you know, British based data, which obviously is kind of important to me, but yep. also, you know, it all, it teaches because the way the Britain's mess is, going on right now it's we need to learn as fast as we can how badly that's going mostly yeah. so other other countries who have not got to the stage we are learn the lessons quickly and don't do the same thing <laughs> totally yeah no i think it seems like an amazing symbiosis that we could maybe have there um yeah last call that i'll mention that i'm having tomorrow is through i love my people there's i, I have a, a a fun weird eclectic set of people around the world who just are are into things um, and through a cousin of mine, I have a call tomorrow with the COVID regional emergency coordinator for the federal health response for the eight southeastern United States. So, like, he's the guy who for the southeast. Uh, is, is not really near you, but but yeah, useful right. anyway. What's that? Not really near you, but useful anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, the United States is like. Not well, it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not about near. It's, the, it's that he's the person who's in charge of a quarter of the country, and they're in the in, in terms of their COVID response. Um, and so it's, it's it's less about about proximity and more that he's going to be an amazing person for us to be able to talk to in terms of what Shit, yeah um, what's actually functional um, that that we can potentially be doing. So pr part of the conversation tomorrow is just going to be about seeing whether it's apples and oranges because the kind of stuff that they're dealing with may be stuff that is just totally not amenable to what we're doing. So I'll just quickly mention, you know, he was saying 
you know, the area of, the area of greatest concern from a response prospect is getting industries and supply chain back online to meet the demand for PPE and pharmaceuticals. It's too late for prevention and we're in, the, in, in, meeting, we're in meeting the overwhelming medical logistics needs. So, yeah, that's a little bit out of our remit, really. But again, I think that, that, I think that with any of those pieces, what we need to look at is to say, um, what's your critical path? Which of the elements of your critical path are the things which are slowed down primarily in things that relate to, to data analysis and machine learning? Information. What, where's the information and, bottlenecks? And, and, and then I think that that's the thing, is that we make sure that we don't overpromise what we can do for anyone like this, but instead what we simply do is say, here's what we're really good at, and if, if, if he's got a complicated process that two sections of it, we could reduce the timing on them by 20%. That's, that's a lot of lives in terms of, of what the actual impact of that can be. Yeah, an old game. No, you, you talked about that reminded me of the fact that a gaming mate of mine, I'm, he's, he's in health, he worked in health insurance for a long time, but he was a, um, he is a FEMA coordinator for, okay. for, tennis, for Tennessee. So he's in the FEMA network and, and deals with that. And I really should reach out to him because I'm sure he's really, really busy right now in his own way. Because, yeah, yeah, FEMA's probably probably quite busy right now. That's where this guy's coming from. This, guy, this guy's coming uh, from sort of CDC and FEMA into HHS. And so... Yeah, uh, that that would I think that would be. I'll, I'll reach out. I'll reach out to Kason and see what he's doing because he might be yeah. because we, obviously we played a lot of games together and we used to right. talk about bits and bats. You know what I'm like. I talk about everything, so we'd get into yeah. conversations about all sorts of places. And it yeah, made no, me go, great. "Oh yeah, I should really get in touch with Kason and see if we can yeah. find some use out of him." And and I, and I think that that's really the the thing for all of these different approaches is rather than niche ourselves as like I, I think it's important that what we're doing right now is focusing on that Kaggle two challenge and on getting that piece done. But I think that in a more global sense, looking and simply being able to help any of the people who are involved in making a difference in it understand, here's what we do. If it has to do with data analysis and machine learning and being able to visualize that in a good way, that's where we're golden. And so that, that might only be a tiny piece of whatever they're doing, but if we can get involved in that tiny piece, both it can bring us important new data that can help with the tasks that, we're, that we are engaged with, um, and it can do what we are all really here for, which is to maximize the impact we're able to have given the skill set that we sort of embody. So uh, tomorrow, it's an experimental call tomorrow. Again, it's just sort of a, it's, it's an informal one, um, but I think it's gonna be a chance for us to think a little bit about how those kind of things go. I'm gonna ask him whether it's okay to, to record it, and if it is, then to, sh to share it here so that we can, I mean, in part so we can, can see what we, if there's next step, but also in part so we can analyze. So and figure out. So yeah. this is, Daniel, this is the call you have one-on-one -on -one with the person? Yeah. Or is it's it so some general? Ah, oh, okay. It's, 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 it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one call just because it's through a family connection. But um, my my hope is that if it looks like there's next steps that can come from that, then we would get them more. We'll have a group call. Yeah. Talking with Corona Y, yeah. So, um, something got going on. So yeah, I had a nod on that. I had a really enjoyable webinar this morning about um, community organizing community in communities in remote first organizations now and i was like there's some useful tips and hints and once they said they're going to send it out as a link so i'm probably going to share it with the coordinator people because they're the people who are going to get the most out of it really but um and i've got like leeds digital as leeds digital festivals like webinars every day this week they're interesting so oh, the, I did, time, the times are not ideal but if if nothing else I'll see if I can make sure I get links for everything and if they're useful. Some of them are marketing, some of the communication, some of them are organizational. Basically anything that I'm interested in, I'm, I'm gonna turn up and watch, so. No, that's brilliant. Oh, I, I forgot to mention actually, that was one of the things from the AMII call is that um, they, every, they're organizing fireside chats with people like, um, like frontline responders in New York and epidemiologists and such um, that we're able to attend. We can participate with those. They're also arranging, um, basic webinars on like intro to NLP and things like that, that I think a lot of the people who we have who are at an introductory level, that's kind of a way to help them acclimatize and, and yes, likewise, and get up to a place where they may be able to dive in a little bit more. They also have open, like basically office hours with people who are experts um, in, in machine learning. And so I think that if we had a bunch of our people, maybe with one foot in their door, especially the people who are either new recruits on or people who are just getting, finding their feet in NLP. That yeah, we've got some students you know? with like, well, I've got one year or exactly. and it's like, I don't know how useful you're going to be when some of these people are running at like the limit, like not quite the limit of the technology, but are they running at the 
theoretical what's new what's not really like the the, the bleeding edge of technology sometimes i'm like i'm not sure you can keep up with that i'm not sure i can intellectually keep up with it never mind physically doing it yeah so i think i think that'll be a good way to get a whole demographic of the people who are showing up to corona y better engaged so so that's a plus yeah. information from him and encourage like it'll probably be a good thing in terms of our relationship with them if a whole schwack of our junior corona y people show up to one of their I think this Friday is yeah. the intro to NLP kind of thing they're doing. Yeah, I think that'd be really a really good opportunity. It also shows that we're more more than just the smart, the absolute smartest doing the really smart things and ignoring everyone else. It's like we want to increase everyone's knowledge pool because everyone yeah. being smarter means everyone's gets better and we're all better for it. That's right. Yeah, and, I'm, I'm and, and one absolutely of the, pro of that. Yeah, and one of the pieces in terms of outreach that is it's like a different section of outreach, but it's something that feels like it's functional. The bigger that we're getting and the more we're starting to understand what's going on out there, um, the more we're bumping into this larger disorganized ecosystem of all of these different groups like us who are doing things. And I think the more we're able to get uh, like a meta network up of all of those different groups, the more we're going to be able to get rid of some of the redundancies that are there, resource share a little bit better, and figure yeah. out who, like, who's doing what, which teams are working on which kinds of things, so that we can globally focus more. Because it isn't, I mean, this is one of the things that Votian was talking about. It's not about us being the biggest and the best. It's about us oh. figuring out how do we tailor what we're doing to be a part of the, ma the maximum impacts that can happen. And part of that is yeah, knowing help. what's going on and fitting in with it. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I've, I think I started with the outreach things. I started listing other organizations, not doing the same thing, but similar things. And, I'm, yeah. and every time I find them, I'll just be like, I found another one or somebody, because some people turn up in chat and go, oh, well, what about this institute? And I'm like, I have not a clue who they are. Then I'll have a quick look and I'm like, yeah. they're not doing the same thing, but they're, you know, supported by 20 governments and they're doing like body you know making sure that data systems talk to each other i'm like yeah that's that's a useful thing that yeah. we want to get we want to at least talk the same language as them and mm -hmm. make sure that we're on board you know we're not doing the same doing something they're already doing better right. and more funded because it's different, exactly. you know, again we can concentrate our efforts in other other avenues or even if it's our efforts could be concentrated on connecting two yeah. disparate groups that don't even know each other exist and go yeah you two should talk to each other totally. even if we're not involved just you two talk right. to each other and walk away <laughs> and, and similarly about looking at the people who we onboard and some of them may be things that are actually a totally better fit for a different group and being able to, to start getting some of that migration back and forth happening as well. Um, on, that, on that sort of partner sponsorship network side, um, Anton, if you can send me the, um, the link to, you, you give a great Trello example um, of a board used uh -huh. tracking track I, feeds. I think I sent it to you already. Oh, okay. Let me see. But I'm gonna try tonight to get uh, all of our sponsor partner stuff migrated over to that board mm -hmm. and then through the lists of, we have a few different spreadsheets that have some some groups we might want to contact and just start trying to um, get organized and, uh, and coordinate them. I, um, I, on the webinar this morning, the there was three organizations and one of them's called DXW. It's a, a digital agency in Leeds, but they work exclusively with um, public public servants. So they deal with all government, mm -hmm. local government, national government. But they um, it talked about their organization, one of the reasons why they organize the way they do. And they have something called a playbook. And they talked about their link. And I found the playbook once they talked about it. And I think it would be a good model for Corona Y to build its mm -hmm. knowledge knowledge management system on top of and it's and it was he said it was based on another system so i found both of them and i'll put links in as a as a way because it is literally um it's built on i think i don't know what it's built on but it's basically built on top of um uh get like a git repository but it's nice and tidy and organized oh, interesting. Right. but people but people can edit it like the organizers themselves can go in and edit and change so it's a living document but it's a living document with That's like the, the values the principles the you know this the way they the way the sales works the professions the leadership strategies the delivery management production management use it like everything oh, that awesome happens course. in the organization has a little space and obviously we're not going to fill it all out but i think it's a good model to yeah just because I'm sick and tired of like disparate bits being in every place and and I just want one book that's at least here's the things that you need to know and I know we need to set up at some point it's going to need writing and we only have the right bits and bats of it at first but 
just having it in and, and then the, the advantage of that is is like later on you can even have like teams talk about like the technology that we're using and the references to the t so it's just it could be a it could be used as an onboarding system it could be used as a as a, a, a data management you know a, a knowledge management system and yeah i just think it's an interesting way of working so i think that's something i'd have got to look yeah, at trying to make yeah let's check it out uh it's already five o'clock i need yeah. to to run yeah, why don't we uh, why don't we close this call off i think that we've we've covered the stuff that we need to um and yeah, we can just continue in Slack if there's any sort of major things we've realized we've, we've mm -hmm. here. And then I'll I'll try tonight to to get this this uploaded and, and throw it onto YouTube and throw it into our channel. Okay. Cool. All Thank right. you very much, sir. Yeah, nice talking to you, Tyler. Bye, guys. Daniel. Bye. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye.